everybody, Pedro Correa with Demand Magazine, hanging out with Alexander Draymond. How you doing? How's it going, man? Good. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So, where did you get your inspiration to act from? <laughs> it just, it was within me since I was born. I, I never had a doubt that I was going to be doing something else. Apart from when I was a, I guess a little kid, there was a, a time where I wanted to be an astronaut, but that didn't last long. Oh, they yeah. told me I had to good, be good at maths. And, it was not my case. And uh, when I was like 17, my parents thought about, you know, getting me into medicine because mm. it just seemed like a good idea or better than being an actor. So I went to see an open heart surgery. Really? At yeah. what? It, how old were you? I was 17. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thought you were like seven or something. That would have been no, 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 no. I was 17. 17. <laughs> okay. It was fucked up enough. Yeah, that's still 17. pretty intense. Yeah. I mean... Damn, were, were they doctors or what? I mean, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my stepmom is a, is a doctor and she took me to see open heart surgery. Wow. Yeah, that is crazy. And where was that? Where were you living at the time? At uh, the time I was living in France. Mm. The French open heart surgery. Okay. That sounds bad. <laughs> that is, I'm getting He vicious. survived, I'm told he survived. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I like to think it was because you were there. I mean, you were rooting him on, I'm sure, right? You know, before it started, they told me if you feel kind of weird, if you need uh -huh. to sit down or feel like you're going to pass out, there's a chair, just make sure you don't fall into all those cables that are connected <laughs> to his body, right? And I was like, I'm cool, you know. Okay. And they started, like, they, they, after they, you know, they take a saw and they saw, like, oh, oh my God. God. They take it out up by the neck. And then they put this apparatus in there that they turn and it kind of cranks open the torso. <sighs> Man, when that happened, I, I did have to sit down. That is surpassing that. That is nightmare worthy. <laughs> well, tell us about your new project, The Last Kingdom. So, The Last Kingdom is set in the 9th century. Um, at the time, England didn't exist. There was loads of different kingdoms, and mm. the Danes invaded as Vikings and started pillaging and taking over the country, and all these little kingdoms started falling one by one. And um, King Alfred, who ended up being known as King Alfred the Great, got everybody to unite and put up a, 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 you know, all the Saxons that were living in England at the time and, um, and start fighting off the Danes. And this is how England became England. And was it shot in England or was it shot somewhere else? Parts of it were shot in Wales, parts okay. of it were shot in Denmark, but most of it was in Hungary. What are you planning? Okay, I, I play Uhtred, who was born a Saxon, okay. but his father gets killed by a, a Viking lord, an invader, and this guy takes the child in because he can see the warrior and the, the, the fighter, and, uh, and he takes him in as a slave, but little by little he adopts him as his son, he becomes part of the family, and he grows up a Viking, he grows up a, a pagan. Because one of the big leading themes in the show is the fight between the Christians and the pagans. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the clash of the two religions. And his, his uncle takes over his birthright, his homeland. And so Uhtred's goal is to take those lands back. But in order to do that, he's going to have to team up with the Saxons. Because with the Vikings, um, he's always seen as an outsider. You know? Okay. Same thing with the Saxons, but at least there he's already got a title, so. Mm. Gotcha. And how did you prepare for a role like that? I mean, that's definitely not everyday well, it's, life, right? It's based, yeah, it's, it's based on the books of Bernard Cornwell, mm -hmm. who is the number one historical writer at the moment in the world. And I love doing a lot of research for my, for my characters, and uh, sometimes it can take a lot of time to, to find out where to find your material, you know? And there it was just all done for me and mm -hmm. all I had to do was read the book. So so that was a great inspiration for the character. Um, and then, you know, like sword fighting and horseback riding, stuff like that. Did you did you train for that? Like specifically? Oh, yeah, of course. Did you yeah, know how to yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh that's rad. Did you know how to do that before or was this part of the training? I used to do horseback riding when I was a kid, like early teenage years. Because I, I used to live in South Dakota for a while and, and I was with with, um, you know, I was living on, on this horse ranch, so, mm. you know, I would, I, would, I would just take a horse and go riding, but I, I never had any lessons, it was just, 
<laughs> I think just during those no. times the horse was the brain of the operation. Yeah. Yeah. Was me. I just sat on it and, and things happened. And whose horse was this? You just say like, grab your local horse and go? No, no, no. no. I, was, I, was living, I was living with a family who were dear friends of mine. And oh, okay. they, they had like eight horses. Oh, wow. Yeah. So right. I, I did it when I was a kid and that's, that's where I picked up the love. For, for horseback riding and, mm. and I, I was, you know, I think the fact that I enjoyed it so much made it easier once I was on set. You're in this huge production. How did you get, you know, to this level? I mean, do you, do you have any advice for any upcoming actors? Just never stop. Keep on going. You know, whatever happens, just don't stop. Cool, man. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much, dude.